the Houston Texans are in for a probably rough Sunday. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video on Mana Sports Talk. I am your host Mana and in this video I am previewing the Houston Texans matchup this weekend in week 2 versus the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to be telling you all the keys to the game and just going over last week and what I thought about that as well and how that relates to this game here. So you know the Texans are really in store for a tough game this week um, against the Cleveland Browns who I think are one of the better teams in the AFC should be a contender. Um, in the AFC, put up all they got against the Chiefs, almost got it done. Um, and, you know, being at Cleveland is only going to make this difficult season opener at home for the Browns. But we'll see what the Texans can do here. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very tough matchup for them. But, you know, we'll see what happens. You never know. This could be a, uh, what you call it, a, a trap game for the Browns, you know, considering how great the Texans did play uh, last weekend, even though it was against the Browns. Um... I just wanted to talk about Tyrod Taylor and how impressive he looked last week. He just looked like Deshaun Watson last week, straight up. He just played incredible. He was honestly the standout of the game. To me, besides that defense, which really showed up, Tyrod was 21 out of 33 for 291 yards and two touchdowns. He also had four rushes for 40 yards as well um, in this game against the Jaguars. There were some big plays down the field. He showed his wheels off using his legs. He had some big deep throws to Brandon Cooks, um, showing off that mobility, that elusiveness, and firing the ball downfield. Um, just it was a lot of fun to watch him do it. Uh, he honestly just has to take care of the ball this week against the Browns. No turnovers, don't give them any extra possessions, and just play how you did last week. Play free, uh, and also you know be smart about it. He's gonna have to be more careful against Cleveland, going up against that D line. Uh, they're definitely going to be coming with much more force. He's got to be careful about that, um, holding the ball too long. But you know that offense produced 37 points last week. Who would have thought the offense would have scored 37 points? Probably nobody, but the Texans won 37-21 to in what honestly was a beat-up. I um, wanna also want to talk about establishing this running game. It's going to be another key for this week as well, just like it was last week. I talked about the running game, how important it was. Last week, making Tyrod Taylor comfortable in his first ever start and then establishing that play action off of it. That's exactly what they did with, with what looks to be starting running back Mark Ingram, who had 26 carries for 85 yards and a touchdown. Philip Lindsay also had a touchdown as well as David Johnson did in the passing game. These three, what I like to call it, Mark Ingram is the power back, Lindsay is the speed back, and David Johnson is, is versatility. So, so you have all three you know, dimensions, you could say, in your running back group, which is really, really impressive. So, like last week, I think Mark Ingram should have majority of the carries. He a power runner, you know, like Mark Ingram, downhill, right up with the gut, I think should be uh, pretty good against the, this Cleveland Browns team. You got to play physical just like they do to you, blow for blow. Um, and I think Mark Ingram should have a pretty good week this week going against up the Browns. You have to establish the running game. You're going to have to make long positions like the Browns are going to do to you. Um, now to going to Brandon Cooks. You know, he was arguably their best offensive player. He's going to be very useful in play action this week. I'm in that deep shots as well. You know, Brandon Cooks had five catches for 132 yards last week for an average of 26 yards per catch. He was on the receiving end of some of those deep bombs that Tyrod sent to him. He's going to be very useful in that play action in the deep shots. The secondary of the Browns is still a little bit inexperienced, a bit young, although it's going to be difficult against Denzel Ward. I think it's going to be a little more difficult to try and look for guys like Danny Amendola or um, Chris Conley as well. But Brandon Cooks can definitely take the top off of this defense. You know, it's not it's not going to be anything like a hill to Mahomes to Hill connection, but, you know, we're trying our best here down here in H-Town. Um, but you got to establish that running game, get it going in play action, and hope Brandon Cooks can take that top off. And now this defense. You know, this secondary was really great last week. Three interceptions matched the season uh, entirely last year with three interceptions of Trevor Lawrence. Um, Justin Reed had a pick. Brendan Hargraves had one. And then the linebacker Christian Kirksey had one as well. 
This week, the Texans are getting back cor- uh, safety Lonnie Johnson, who's going to be really huge this week. Lonnie Johnson has been tremendously improving uh, over the years. He's been, I think he's going to be a really great player this season for the Texans in that secondary. Really big guy, fast guy, uh, physical guy. I think that's what you need back there with Justin Reed. Uh, that's going to be big. You know, no Odell Beckham Jr. That's what the Browns have been saying, no Odell uh, uh, on Sunday. It's going to make the job easier, we know that. But Jarvis Landry, um, you know, other guys like Donovan Peoples-Jones, I mean, they're, they're going to be still quite a bit to handle. They're going to have to hold back all they can on this passing game, you know. Um, and then, you know, you're going to see that Browns running game bur- burst up every once in a while. And they're going to have to make tackles, um, you know, as they're the last line of defense um, against guys like Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And now what's really going to decide this game is this D-line of the Texans. Whitney Merciless, Malik Collins, Ross Blacklock, Demarcus Walker, Charles Omenehu, Jacob Martin. All these guys are going to really play a big role in this game by trying to stop this epic running game of the Browns. Arguably the best running game in the NFL. It's going to be tough, but they're going to have to make an impact somehow. The Texans are going to have any chance of winning this game. You know, they're going to have to make some really good tackles up front as they're the first line of defense. You have to block shed really good, even against this amazing offensive line that the Browns have. You know, if there's no Jetrick Wills, you're going to have to make use of that on the left side. Maybe move some guys over there and try and burst up that left side of that offensive line. You're going to have to get pressure in that backfield somehow. you got newly acquired Jaleel Johnson as well on that D-line from the Saints practice squad this week. As reported by Aaron Wilson on Sports Talk 790. Um... You know, you have a lot of depth here on this D-line. Fresh legs need to continuously be coming in. And you've got to somehow make some impact back there. But my prediction for this week, um, unfortunately, the Browns 31, Texans 20. of the Browns winning by 11 this week. Texans are sent back to reality, honestly, after a great week one matchup, taking a heavy loss in Cleveland. I honestly just don't see how the Texans can consistently stop that downhill running game of Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, and that really great offensive line that the Browns have, even without potentially Jetrick Wills. It's still amazing. Um, I think they're going to be great even without their amazing left tackle. It's going to take a lot of effort to stop this running game. Um, I just don't know if they'll be able to do it consistently, and they have to try and make Baker Mayfield uncomfortable. Again, I don't know if they can consistently do that. I think the Texans do okay in the passing game. You know, without OBJ defensively, they're going to do a solid job on Jarvis Landry. Um, But, you know, even an improved run defense that the Texans have is going to be too little for the Browns. They're just going to run right through us. The play action, it's going to be lethal, I'm telling you. Because if we're trying to stop that run, it's going to be lethal. They're going to burn us back, um, you know, in the secondary. It's going to be lethal. You know, we saw that in, in Kansas City as well. I think Tyrod Taylor does a solid job in his first game back in Cleveland. And he does pretty well. I think he's going to be facing quite a bit of pressure from Malik Jackson, Jadavion Clowney, Miles Garrett. That front is definitely going to be harassing him like Patrick Mahomes did get under some pressure last week. You know, there are going to be some big plays to Brandon Cooks once in a while. The running game will do solid. But again, I just don't know if uh, the plays are going to be consistent enough for the Texans throughout Sunday. Um, that's my prediction. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and enable notifications. Comment in the comment section what your prediction is. It's at Sunday, 12 o'clock here on CBS. Be sure to check it out. It's going to be a good game. And I hope to see you in the next video.